Ooh. Oh, big light beam on my face. <laughs> okay. What are some of the most prominent Linux misconceptions that you've ever seen? I asked you all that question in a uh, little community post that I have up here on my channel. Actually, you know what? Here, let me let me go ahead and do this. Oh, look at that cat. Look, f There we go. Yeah, look at this cat. <laughs> look at how doofus he looks. Yeah, so I made this post a few days ago and uh, you guys responded. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go through some of the responses here. There we go, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go through some of these responses and uh, we're gonna talk about some misconceptions and we're gonna have a grand old time. It's gonna be a fun a fun little thing and we get to see responses from y'all in the community. It'll, it'll be great, it'll be great, I, I think. So we got Aunt Nilsum. Oh. Oh, oh, I get it. I, I I think I get it. It's like autism, but like nil. I don't. Uh, my classmates believe that Windows is more secure than Linux because you're forced to create a Microsoft account and pay for a license. And because it's more popular than Linux, probably the weird. Okay. Yeah, okay. That 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 is kind of a, a, a weird argument for uh, using Windows over Linux. I mean, listen, if the person wants to use Windows, they're going to find any sort of like mental gymnastics way to figure out why Microsoft is more secure than Linux and stuff like that. I mean, like, I personally hate having to make an account and I personally hate, uh, you know, having to pay for a license for an operating system when I'm running a full operating system right now completely for free, but uh, whatever. That, that person's going to be that person. Maybe one day they'll come around, but, uh, okay, here we got Sin SRC. Uh, you probably won't stick with your first distro if you're kind of impulsive like me. Don't worry about, don't worry too much about making the big decision because it's pretty likely you'll fly across the spectrum of distributions no matter what you choose. I mean, that's basically what um, my experience on Linux has been like. I mean, fucking, I started with uh, Pop! OS and then I moved to Fedora and then I was experimenting with uh, Nobara and Linux Mint and Endeavor OS on my laptop. And, and then eventually I just landed on Arch and I'm relatively happy here. I don't think I'm going to go any deeper. If anything, I might go like back up a few layers because um, having to manage my uh, main PC as an Arch computer, I'll admit is a little bit tiring after a while, but you know, I'm still relatively happy with where I am in Arch. And I never would have ended up here if I didn't start experimenting and just flying across all different distributions and just trying a bunch of stuff and seeing what works. Like, yeah, you're just figuring out what your preferences are. That's a very good way to put it. If I'd like to just interject for a fuck, okay, just, just, no, no. Uh, all software on Linux has to be open source. I mean, we know that's not true. I mean, I'm running the uh, proprietary NVIDIA drivers. I mean, okay, look, the reason why Linux people are so obsessed with the concept of open source software is because like, at least from my experience and like from what I've seen, having software be open source is kind of like a um, a way for the community to like check and balance like what software is doing and if anything is going wrong. And it ends up building a lot more trust in, uh, in the community with the people who are writing software because you can just go in and just check like, oh, is this software doing what it's actually supposed to be doing? Yeah, it may take a little bit more work to do that, but uh, we've all been burned by software companies before, and we continue to be burned by software companies. So it's like, you know, I can't really uh, fault anyone for thinking you ha it has to be open source, but that's not the case. You can kind of just play by ear and just kind of go from wherever on a uh, software. And proprietary software exists on Linux, so just, just the same as it does on Windows and Mac, so... It's just that the Linux community is more knowledgeable than uh, something like the Windows or the Mac community. And so we just are aware of like how software can be manipulated and stuff like that. Ah, that's just what I uh, am saying. I know I'm stammering a lot. It's very early in the morning and I have yet to eat anything. So <laughs> we're just we're just kind of fucking around uh, that Linux is not secure because anyone can read the code. I mean, we literally just talked about this because software isn't magic, right? Like, yeah, you need to keep like certain security aspects of software secret to make sure that people don't take advantage of it. But if everyone can see the code, then everyone knows how it's supposed to work. And if everyone knows how it's supposed to work, then any any like uh, malicious software or malicious code that's put into the Linux kernel or any other piece of software, you know, people will just be able to see it and be able to point it out and no one will use it anymore. 
we kind of just went over this. <laughs> uh, that it's somehow more broken or difficult to use than other OSs. Uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux all have their own pain points. PS Orange Kitty uh, pick is appreciated. Thank you. I mean, yeah, obviously, every different OS has its own pain points. And what you're willing to put up with is just kind of what you're willing to put up with. It's like, do you want to deal with the big companies on Windows or Mac? Or do you kind of want to have your own curated experience on Linux? Like, what's your, what's your tolerance for maintaining and managing your own system? If your tolerance for that is extremely low, then you're probably going to go for something like a Mac because, like, you don't want to worry about managing your own computer, so you just let Apple do it for you. Kind of the same thing with Windows, but it's like you kind of have more control than Mac. At least there's more, like, legacy programs. And uh, one thing I will give to Windows is that its backwards compatibility is pretty good. I haven't used Windows in years, so I don't know if that backwards compatibility stuff has changed. Uh, if if it has, let me know in the comments. That would be an, a good thing to know. But from what I remember, like for the most part, if you wrote a program to be used on like Windows 98 or Windows Vista, it should still work on Windows 10 with a little bit of messing around. But like there's compatibility modes, right? Like you can run a piece of software in compatibility mode with like Windows 10 or Windows Vista or MS DOS. So like, yeah, the backwards compatibility on Windows is a, is a, is a good thing that uh, Microsoft has done. Uh, okay, here we go. That it's hard to set up. I mean, even Arch Linux nowadays, you can set up with a simple install script. So like, I don't know, maybe that, maybe I should do a video on Arch install. Maybe I should do a video on like setting up, uh, like, cause I, I have a, a PC upgrade planned and maybe I should record, uh, me setting up my Arch install. That'd be neat. I hope I remember to do that. That Linux is somehow old and outdated. I've had multiple people say that Linux is super old and outdated after telling them I use it. Like what? Okay, hold on. I, I need to look this up. When was the Linux kernel invent? When was the Linux kernel first developed? Let me look this up. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, wow. That's actually great. Okay, 1991 is when the Linux kernel was invented. Um, Windows NT. Oh, no, 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 no. What was the first version of Windows? That was with the Windows. No, the Windows NT kernel was later on. Initial release. Oh, you kind of can't see that. Hold on. Can I like... Yeah, fuck it. Let me move this over. Initial release, November 20th, 1985. Here, initial release. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It says right here, initial release, 1991, 33 years ago. So like Windows is actually older than uh, Linux. I find that funny, but you know, <laughs> you have to program your apps yourself. Who the fuck? Who the fuck think? Okay. <laughs> that is actually really funny. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to call this person dumb, right? Because ignorance, like you, you shouldn't combat ignorance by like laughing at them or shaming them because that's only going to make them go further away from the thing that you're trying to, like you're trying to tell them about, right? It's like, nah, bro, people make Linux uh, applications and you can just download those. And then we have stuff like Wine that let you, lets you play games and stuff like that. Like, I mean, obviously you don't have to do that. It's just, it's interesting to hear this kind of stuff coming from people who don't use this software, you know? I think if anything, the Linux community could do a better job of like onboarding new users because right now, I don't think Linux is ever going to get away from its um, reputation of being the hardcore computer scene and being really gatekeepy and being really like, you know, if you don't know how to, uh, you know, use a computer in this way or this way, then you just don't belong here. Like, I, I, I both believe that gatekeeping is extremely important for any community, but it shouldn't be done in like a malicious way. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's where Linux kind of lost the sauce. I feel like the Linux community is too like maliciously uh, gatekeepy with its own uh, operating system. I hope to change that one day, but you know, I, I don't know if I'll be able to change that on my own. So it'll be up to all of us to sort of uh, clean up Linux's public image. You know what I mean? Uh, you need the terminal to do everything in the system. Yeah, okay. Like that's that's a very easy misconception to fall into. Like the reason that Linux users use the terminal all the time is just because it's easier for a lot of people. It's more efficient for a lot of people. I use the terminal, but I don't use it for everything. 
Like, God, have you even tried to uh, browse files on your system using the terminal? Like, yeah, you can do it, and I'm sure people definitely prefer doing that, but I don't. I would rather just use uh, my regular old file browser right here. Or, like, if I'm trying to uh, browse for apps or anything, or I'm trying to get some flat packs installed, brother, I'm just going to use Discover. That's on as built into KDE Plasma and built into SteamOS, too. And then there's applications I use like Carla or the fact that I'm using like a traditional web browser. Like it's like you don't need to use the terminal for anything. In fact, the only reason I really use the terminal nowadays is just to do like full system updates or to do stuff like uh, like uh, fast fetch. Like this stuff is cool. Like I, I think this is I think this is a neat application for it. And then you can do like fun stuff like uh, BPY top. Oh wait, I don't have that installed. Do I have HTOP installed? I do. You can use stuff like uh, HTOP and you can get like decent readouts of like, oh, what the fuck is going on with my memory? <laughs> well, there you go. You can get like pretty decent readouts of your system. Like it's a, it's a, it's a fucking uh, process manager, process viewer, things like the system manager. I don't know what the, I don't know what this application is called on Windows anymore. It's been a minute. Obviously, it all depends on what your uh, use case is and what you're trying to do here on Linux. Uh, and we got to the end of the list. I'm going to put this picture of Orange Kitty right here. We actually do call him. Oh, there we go. We actually do call him uh, Orange Kitty. Uh, his name is Oliver, but we don't really call him that. We just we just call him because he's an Orange Kitty. Like, look at him. He's, he's Orang. Okay, well, here. That was actually pretty interesting. Let me go ahead and fix my own self and put myself back on the center of the screen whoa so yeah i mean obviously misconceptions are misconceptions um i'm not trying to like debunk them or like use reasoning or logic we're just kind of going through some community posts uh because this video was not supposed to come out this week i had another video planned that uh is taking a lot longer than expected and I, I'm, let me be real with you, I'm kind of cooking with this one, so I'm, I'm excited to get this out uh, for the next video two weeks from now. And uh, let me just say this, uh, I will also be posting a little bit of a teaser for the next video, uh, and that will be only available to uh, members, the specifically the super YouTube lads, and they also get access to like behind the scenes content, and if you're any level of member, you get access to like behind the scenes posts, and hey look at that thank you to all of the youtube lads who helped me pay my bills it's very cool they get access to cool stuff that you don't see anywhere else on the channel anyway um enough shilling i'm going to go sleep i am very tired <laughs> have a good day everybody goodbye see you in two weeks